you will you will remember the day that you shift into the creative orientation. You really will. You know, it's a really big shift. See, we don't teach personal development here. You know, the personal development, self-help ther um, therapy world. What what that's trying to do is to try to update a dysfunctional structure. Like it, it, personal development's whole premise is how do we make it, make the best use of something that's not working very well, right? How, how do we get to the highest point in it? And uh, and the, the truth is we don't live in that structure at all. So, so personal development is working with the most advanced ego, the most dysfunctional and trying to just heal it to the best it can be. What what we do with magnetic mind is we we acknowledge uh, the dysfunction and we we just come over here and we live in a, a creative structure, so we're not trying to fix or heal or improve uh, this part of us that doesn't need fixing or improving or healing. We just live in a completely different structure. So magnetic mind isn't personal development; it's creative development. When you learn how to step into the creative structure and turn your thoughts into things you know, you realize that you're not broken and you can have what it is that you choose just the way you are. And so what you're going to learn is that most of us, if not all of us, have been um, born into the wrong direction in life, really, the wrong orientation. And, uh, and this orientation causes a lot of struggle. Uh, it causes a lot of oscillation. It causes a lot of pain and a lot of frustration, right? And that's the orientation of looking at the world and looking at life as, as something that needs to be solved or fixed or uh, improved, right? And uh, <laughs> Brenny, I, just, I would improve. So Brenny's written in, I'm not broken, just need an upgrade. I, I, would, I would improve that and say, you're not broken. You just need to live in a creative structure. You'll be exactly the same. And th this takes a while to get our, our head around because we're so conditioned uh, to to want to fix and heal ourselves and to improve and think that if we had that life would be better. And it, it's not like this is a new thought, right? I'm certain that when electricity turned up, um, everyone thought, yes, electricity, life's going to be so great when we have that, right? Yes, a washing machine. I no longer have to, you know, scrub and wash the clothes. Yes, you know, the, the car turns up, we now we now have an automobile. Yes, that's going to make it better. That's going to make it better. That's going to make it better. And so the truth is, is that if we keep living in that way, where we always think it's going to be better or that's going to fix us, well, you know, everywhere we go, there we are, right? Everywhere we go, there we are. And so what happens is, is, is the only thing we've ever taught ourselves is that the now is not good enough. Does that make sense, everyone? The now's not good enough. And, you know, so the now's not good enough. It's when we have that. The now's not good enough. It's when we have that. And so someone asked me, you know, Chris, how can you be so certain um, that that other orientation is so wrong? Well, I mean, it's not like we haven't tested it for millions of years, right? Right? It's, it's not like there hasn't been the biggest case study of human, and, you know, right? Like this, we've... We've definitely tested it and you can go out there and you can see a lot of people who, you know, still trying to fix their situation, have something better. True. It's it's not like we, we can't observe that that orientation doesn't work. Right. It, it's I think it's been well tested and it, it's been proven that it that it doesn't it doesn't actually work. What works is actually uh, creative development, understanding how to create and realizing that there's nothing wrong with fear. You know, I think in a lot of um, self-help or improvement, self-development courses, uh, you know, feeling um, doubt or uncertainty or fear, it's kind of like the um, the enemy, isn't it? It's kind of like the enemy, like, how dare you be scared of something? How dare you, you know, and, and it doesn't really work. Like you just get you, you get more uh, focused on trying to, to fix yourself. The truth is, is that that fear, that anxiety, that doubt, that is a very, very, very useful part of uh, the human condition. And there's nothing wrong with it. And mag mind, we don't make anything wrong. We're not trying to, you know, there's nothing, that, that's part of it. In fact, if we didn't have an unconscious that was, uh, that was based in fear, I don't know if the human species would have lasted as long as we have. Does that make sense? Like, it's, it's really important to get that, is that 
uh, you know, you get to create a life you love without fixing yourself. And, and as Christie's reminded uh, everyone of something that I, I said recently is that creating a life you love is the best therapy on the planet. Right. You go create a life you love. You go create things you love. You understand creative development. You learn how to create a new body, a great relationship, the house you love, more money. You know how to you you create a life you love. And, um, you know, you, you'll see. You'll see there won't be all these other things. So it's, it's very important um, what we're what we're doing here. And so it, just know that it takes a while to wake up to the creative orientation. Just, just know old structures and patterns, they do die hard. They don't just leave. And so it, it takes a while to stop thinking that your life is a problem to be solved and, uh, and, and that you need to fix yourself. So today uh, I got instructed by my team that we really uh, that there's been a lot of questions about true choices. And so we're going to just dive deep into true choices. We've had quite a lot of questions, which is amazing. So I'm really, really excited to just go into this. I'm actually going to uh, take uh, some some um, some notes that are that are from my book, directly from my book, uh, understanding what a true choice is. A true choice is something that for me took me a heck of a long time to truly live. If I was honest, this was the one that took me the longest to, to actually just start having choices that mattered to me. And so definition of a true choice is that you would just like it for its, its own sake. For no other reason, you would just like it for the sake of it. You do, For the sake of it, you want it. And there's nothing else that you're trying to do by having it. Okay, that's it is you just would like it. You're just choosing to have it. And you're not, you're not uh, doing anything else other than, than choosing. And it's, it's actually very important that we do live the magnetic moment first and that we are living the core four choices in these things because until you're living the, the four orienting choices, it is quite difficult just to have uh, a true choice. Okay, so, so I just want to premise today's conversation that uh, until you're choosing and living a life you love, until you're becoming and being the predominant creative force, until you really are choosing and, and experiencing yourself as healthy and vital, until you're choosing to be in your truest nature and purpose, many times you 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 won't uh, you won't actually go create true choice. You'll be so focused on choices that are actually designed to do what we call a negative vision. A negative vision, by definition, is a choice that is actually uh, based in what you don't want. A negative vision is a choice based in what you don't want and trying to fix it. So I'm going to pull up some notes here. Um, you know, you all have um, you all have access to these notes. Uh, this is actually from, uh, from our workbook, uh, and also it is in my book as well. So uh, let's just talk about um, the seven focus points that keep you from a true choice. This is directly from, um, you know, my best-selling book, uh, You're Not Broken. So the first way that we keep ourselves from a true choice, okay, is that what we do is we actually want to resolve a negative belief. And so the goal or choice is actually about completing a way you feel incomplete about yourself, okay? So here are some examples of some negative beliefs. The first negative belief is someone has a belief under, under it all that they actually believe they're not worthy. So they will make all their goals about others, the world, and society. They actually believe once I've been good enough, I will be worthy and then I can have what they want. And uh, for a lot of people, we have to bring the choice back. So many people come to me and say, Chris, you know, I want to impact, you know, uh, you know, a, a million people through my coaching business. And I say, oh, that's a great choice. And they say, because there's so much pain and suffering in the world. I was like, oh, OK, OK, well, well, that's interesting. But but why do you want to choose it? Well, I want to choose it, Chris, because I want to help all of these people. Anyone here had a choice like that before? They say, I want to do it for everybody else. I want to do that for my kids and I want to help this. And I want to, it's about everybody else. The truth is that if you want it to be a true choice, the answer is I want to have a, a coaching business that helps other people because it feels good to help people. 
Do you see that? Do you see that different? It just feels, it's just good. I just want to help people. I like the feeling of, of doing my best to help people. I like that feeling. And that is the true choice. And that is when you actually get into the truth, because that's when you bring the power back to you. Another, uh, you know, negative belief that we try to resolve, this one is very familiar to me, is the idea, and we have a belief that we're not good enough. And so that we'll set goals to achieve lots to prove to others that I am then good enough. So we don't even enjoy the choice. We don't even enjoy what we're going for, but we're doing it so that everyone else claps us and says, wow, that was really cool. But there's nothing in it for us. You see that? It's about what everyone else thinks. So instead of just choosing how you want it to be, you're choosing it on how others are going to see it by trying to prove how good enough you are. The next one is uh, an I'm insignificant. So all the goals are about creating significance. Or another thing is if someone thinks they're insignificant, they just won't have any goals right? Because they're insignificant. So I don't have any goals, Chris. I don't have any choices. Life's just, you know, easy and breezy and fun. I won't have it. The next is that underneath, they think they don't belong. So all their goals are about fitting in, about creating a community, uh, you know, about uh, trying to get a relationship. This person will have a goal of having a relationship to complete themselves. They, they really, really want to feel like they belong with something. That's what's underlying it all. Uh, but do you, does everyone see that that you can just choose to have a relationship um, with someone you love because that'd be great, right? And you don't have, there'll just be a choice you want instead of trying to make it about everything else, right? The only reason why you'd make it about everything else is that you're not living the magnetic moment. Uh, the, the next is that I don't have the capability, okay? So all my goals will be about creating enough resources, knowledge or money, okay? So, so the person who has an underlying assumption that they're not capable They'll come to me with a, a choice. Chris, I choose the end result of making a million dollars. Oh, okay, cool. Um, right. So, you know, do you want to, what do you want to do with that million dollars? Do you, do you want to just swim in it? You know, do you, what, what's the point of it? Oh, I don't know. I just want it. You know, like they, they see that or they have a goal about trying to create knowledge rather than what they're going to actually go for. Okay, so so that I don't have the capability actually shows up as I choose to have this knowledge or money or relationships or time. Um, however, they actually don't want that. They want what that will give them. Uh, next is uh, I'm not perfect and uh, I need to be perfect. Okay, so this this person has choices about controlling themselves and others. Uh, the I'm not perfect, you know, will specify uh, the exact relationship, how they need to be. This person, you know, they'll have one thing wrong with their health and that's all they'll focus on, that it's not, um, you know, it's not it's not perfect. This, this person will always, uh, always, always, always try to be perfect and go to the gym more and eat the right foods and do everything right. I want to be right. I want to be perfect. So that's that's the first one. Let me just get some feedback from those of us here. Uh, how many of us have lived uh, any of those negative beliefs and, you know, maybe some new people, can you see how some of your choices have actually been designed to resolve um, some underlying beliefs about yourself? Yeah. Yeah, I think a lot of us can, can um, see ourselves in at least two or three of them when we look at our choices. And so the thing is, is that your unconscious takes everything as suggestion. And so if you're going for something that is trying to prove how worthy you are, the, the only assumption that the unconscious can have is that right now you're not worthy. You see, so it's, it's just really important is that you really go, okay, everything's good and, and I'm happy and I'm loving my life now. And I would just like that. I would just like that. That's it. There's no, no, no other psychological tension attached to us it's just that would be great you see that would that's something i would like to have that's something i'd like to see and, and it would feel good to me and it takes a little bit of reflection to go okay if i don't shift the way i'm orienting to my end results all that's going to happen is I'm going to arrive at those creations and feel exactly the same. So I'll sabotage them because if you don't feel good enough and then you're going to go do something to feel good enough, if that thing is designed to make you feel good enough, but you have an identity of not being good enough as you arrive at it, 
your identity cannot accept that reality. So it has to break it. And it'll do it in two ways. It'll just try to go for something bigger, denying the truth, or it'll find a way to sabotage it so you can live the same experience again and again. That's why you see uh, humanity continually living in, you know, negative visions, never actually arriving, never actually going, hey, we're actually really, you know, we're happy. We're always, 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 right, um, following the, the path of dysfunction. True. So, the, you know, there, there is a, a, a first step before this, we, you know, which is to arrive at that place of the magnetic moment and, and truly accepting that there is no better time than right now. And, and once you truly get there, then you just get on with creating. And one of the things that is disappointing <laughs> for many, um, many creators is that the old energy that you used to get about having dreams and wishes and how uh we, you you would used to romanticize about how great it's going to be you, you you just don't have that anymore one of the ways that i know someone's living in a negative vision is that when they tell me about what they're creating their energy shifts they say, oh, Chris, when I have a relationship, oh, it will be amazing. Blah, blah, blah. How's it right now? Yeah, lonely, frustrating. I know for certain the person will never have that because you got to be it to see it. Does that make sense, everyone? Or they go, Chris, if I was a coach all around the world and helping all this, oh, my God, it'd be amazing. They're never going to have it. Never going to have it. They're you, just, you just will never, ever have that. You're actually uh, pretending that that life will be completely different. In fact, uh, when you just feel that your your choices uh, have the exact same feeling that you feel every day, they're just part of it. That's when you'll have it. When you, you just you just will have it, and that's a really important thing. That's when you know you're truly living as a creator. A creator doesn't have this, you know, get big excitement or big disappointment. A creator is very, very present, very much in the moment. Just that's what I'll have and I'll make it happen. Does that make sense? I'll have that. And this took me the longest time to, to really accept, you know, before it, it was, oh, I'll make this money. Yes, it'll be so exciting. And then once I really got this, I stopped, I stopped caring. I was actually like, I don't even care. And then, you know, we made a hundred thousand dollars in a hundred thousand dollars a month and a hundred thousand dollars a week. And then a hundred thousand dollars a day. And I don't give a, I don't care. You know, I, I, I don't, I don't care any more than I care about having my breakfast today. Does that make sense? It, it, it's, it's the exact same. And, and when you get to that precision, you know, I, I wrote a book that sold 200,000 copies and that's awesome. I'm writing a new one. Yeah. That's cool. You know, it's cool. That's when you get that. That's when you're living it. That's when you're being the, the creator. And then true choice is just something you'd love to see see happen, but you're not attached to it necessarily. Does that make sense, Tim? Is, is that, yeah, I'll just, I'll go have that. That'd be cool. That'd be so cool. I'd love to have that. That'd be amazing. I'd love to create that. I'd love to see this happen. And and uh, and then you you just do it. You just do it. Like, uh, you know, I'm writing this new book at the moment and I'm just, it's, it's a really good book. I'm just doing it, you know, I'm, and you just do it. And that, that's the key is that a true choice is just something you would love to have. It, it, and it's just a fun thing. You know, you just, maybe you just love to purchase a motorcycle. You just love to go to a, a holiday uh, in Asia. You just love it. That's it. It's going to be cool. That's a cool thing. Right. And, and that, that's it. And so you're just you're just choosing it. You're just picking it off the shelf of options and saying, that's what I'll create. And you your feeling doesn't shift that much because you're magic, you're a magician, you're a creator, you, you're you're super conscious. And the super conscious knows you're so much bigger than any creation or any moment. And when you really are attached to it, you just you just have it. Yeah, right on, Brie. Good to see you here, my friend. I was thinking about you recently. Oh, that's right. There was a really misbehaving dog there. I was like, you get Bree's perfect dog out there, polite dog. 
Yeah, so it's, it's very, very, very important to get this, is that life can be great right now, and you can be going and creating things that 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 you love, that, that are big. Really important to get. In fact, uh, it's the only way. So let's get into a few other ways that, you know, we, we find ourselves getting into to oscillation, okay? So that was the first one, is that we're actually trying to resolve a negative belief, okay? The second one we see all the time. And this is we only create choices out of reaction, out of reaction, okay? So many people just react. They don't actually want it. Don't actually want it, okay? They just don't want something. So, you know, many people will react. And reaction is actually putting in the power in what you don't want. We see that in going to the gym. The person hasn't actually chosen to be uh, and to have a different body shape. Instead, they're just reacting to the fact that they can't fit some certain trousers again. And so they actually haven't gone all in on a choice, right? They haven't actually said, I would like to have that body shape. They're saying, oh my God, this current body shape sucks. And so I need to go do all of these things. I need to be different. And if I'm different, I'll be better. It's completely out of creation. There's nothing wrong with your body. Have it, have it whatever way you want, right? Have it whatever way you want. It's, it's, it's no, there's no, uh, no drama, no judgment, except those of us that find ways to judge ourselves. you see? And so we react, we, we, you know, we don't love our boss. So we quit and go start a business. We didn't actually want the business. And then all of a sudden the business looks more like a stressful job, <laughs> right? A business is just a stressful job. I, I you know, many people become self-employed and their boss is an asshole, <laughs> <laughs> and so they, they, you know, they, they can't get away from it. And so anyway, it, it, it is funny, um, but, but it's not a true choice if the only reason that you're doing it is uh, because of reaction, okay? And so sometimes it is useful to know what you don't want, and it, and it is useful. At least, you, at least there's something you don't want to create but you don't have to create things based off what you don't want. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense to do that. You just choose it the way you would like it to be, okay? So that's reaction. So if any of your choices are in reaction, that, that's something to really shift, yeah? Uh, cool. So the next one is limitation. Uh, any choice that's limited isn't true. It's not true if it's limited, okay? So sometimes someone someone will say to me, Chris, I want to have a million dollar business. I'm like, oh, okay, that's interesting. Why isn't it two million? And they look at me like, what? I'm like, why isn't it five hundred thousand? Why why isn't it nine hundred thousand? You know, why isn't it a million and one dollar? What 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 like what what's what, what's the point here? And uh, and the the truth is, is it's not what they want. What they want is to have more money than they can spend. You see, but they say the million because that's what they've heard someone else say. Maybe, so, you know, or maybe that's what they think is, you know, they limit it. Does that make sense? Everyone? Do, you, do you really think that most people want the million dollars or the hundred thousand or they just want to have more money they, than they can spend? Which one do you think it really is? Right. To have more than they can spend or to be able to get, you know, what is the truth? And so to, to make sure that we get into the truth is, is the key. Make sense? It, limitation actually removes, actually removes the emotion. And let me just check in with, with all of you guys here. Just a quick survey. Quick survey. When you feel of having a million versus having more money than you can spend, which one's the truth? Which one has more energy? Really, like more money than I can spend or this, this finite number? Yeah, it's the more money, isn't it? Yeah. But not for everyone. There is someone out there that might say to me, but Chris, I would just love to see a million dollars in my bank account and I just want to see it for no other reason. Just like you might want a fast car. I would just love to see that. I would ju just love it. And I'll go, okay. That sounds great. But 99.9% but like of people they just want to have more than they can spend, right? That's the key. And so the key isn't to, to not limit it, right? Some people say, well, I want to have this exact body weight. 
you know, I know a lot about health and body weight doesn't actually make sense. You know, you can be heavier, but, but you know, uh, have more muscle on your body and actually look a lot better, right? You can be lighter because muscle weighs more than fat. So, you know, the truth is, is they want, they really want to have a body that's a certain shape and that's what they really want, but they write weight or something else. They, they put this limitation on. OK, so it's very important that, that what we're getting here is that a true choice is actually just how you would love it. This is the key, just how you would like it, just what you you would choose it to be. Cool. Yeah, very cool. Uh, awesome. OK, next, next one. Um, other people's opinions. OK, this is a very big one. The goal was actually designed about what others think. OK, so I've got this goal to own property portfolio because my, my parents have always said, you know, property is a good thing to invest in. Right. Um, so that, that's what I'm going to do. Or I'm going to become a doctor. And I really, yeah, Chris, I really want to get a promotion. I really want to blah, blah, blah. But it's not actually what they want. What they really want to do is to to be an artist and travel the world. You know, that's what they that's what their heart wants. They really want to open a restaurant, but they're stuck in their father's accountancy practice, you know, saying, I want this accountancy practice to grow. No, they don't. They want to sell the bloody thing and retire and, uh, you know, grow organic um, fruit on a farm. That's what they do. You see what I'm saying? But they, they don't actually, they're so caught into other people's opinions that they're not living from their hearts. Right. And so, of course, this creates oscillation and it's definitely not a true choice. Uh, awesome. OK, um, five control. Control is a really interesting one. Hey, and uh, my my people who understand and have done intuition and, and know something about the Enneagram know that the number eight really tries to create through control. And control says, I must have a relationship with this person and they must treat me in this exact way. Uh, this is how it has to be. Yeah. It is, is that just notice a lack of power in, in that is usually control is in time frame circumstances or certain people it has to be a certain way so uh the only time frame that makes sense is as fast as possible does that make sense if you say i want to have it in a week uh you might not actually enjoy having it in a week and what if it shows up in three days right so it's so a time the only time that is, is just you just choose it so it, it just you just choose the end result and so you don't have to put a time there at all because the only thing that you're saying is I choose this end result to show up as fast as possible. See, you don't necessarily want the relationship with a person, a particular person. You want to have an enjoyable relationship. If you if you write down the particular person, you're just trying to control it. You're not allowing the universe. There's no magic in control. Does that make sense? There's no magic. In fact, control, if you're living out of control, living out the logical brain, is the most unsuper conscious you could be. Because you, you're not allowing any magic to show up. You're not allowing any creativity. And you're definitely not going into innocence at all. Uh, you're definitely not. Okay. Uh, very important. I see a few people asking about this document. This is actually uh, the one of the chapters in my book. Oh, hey, Marion. <laughs> well, it's funny that you're on here and I mentioned the number eight. Um, we've put a link into this workbook if you like. It's actually uh, from my book as well. And you've all got a, a, an ebook you can download or you can go purchase the hard copy if you want. Yeah. Uh, awesome. Uh, it's a chapter about true choice, Stephen. Good question. Awesome. Okay. Uh, number six is a big one. And this is one that really uh, was, was interesting for me to have to uh, look at indirectness indirectness uh indirectness means the 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 choice or the goal that someone's writing down isn't the choice or the goal at all it's actually what they think they need to do in order to get what they really want okay and again this is very similar to what we're talking about with control is that they they want something they want something else but they think that there's only one way to get there you see that? So that they say, I want to have this so I can get to that. You see? And uh, that you must just get into the end result of how you really want it to be, you know, of just how you want it to be. If you truly just want to be a, a coach and, and helping people, that's the choice. Now, it might be that you need to build a business to get there, but it also might be that someone else hires you. Does that make sense? So, so, 
For example, if you write the choice, I choose to create a business, but you actually just want to do the coaching part of it. Well, the coaching part of it is a choice. It may still turn out that you need to do the business to get there, but there may be other ways. You see? So indirectness is, is really important. Okay. So I, I, like I had this, um, I had this example of this one client and uh, you know, th this person said, I created a business so I could have a good life with my kids. And when I was, it was really interesting. So I'm working with him and he said to me, Chris, you know, and he was making a few million dollars at the time. So he had a small business and he was like, well, Chris, I need to, to need to increase my revenue by $600,000. Then I need to employ a C-suite of COO, CEO to run the business for me. And if I do all of that, then I'm going to spend time with my kids. I was like, wow, okay. So what's your end result to grow my business? I was like, okay. Well, what if you just chose that you had a business that allowed, you know, the end result was that you got to spend time with your kids. He was like, well, yeah, that's what I want. So we chose that. And then I asked him a different question. I said, how much money do you actually need to be able to do that? And what happened was we actually sold off a part of his business, let go of some clients that were annoying and took his hours down to like four hours and he was able to, within two weeks, go from this plan of two years to finally then spend time with his kids to surfing with his kids most days, driving them to school himself and picking them up. They're like two weeks. It's going it, to just just because he didn't have his actual true choice. Does that make sense? It was it was going on this wild goose chase, as we say, today. you know, going, going. But that, that's not what he wanted. It's not what he wanted. And, and you know, the and but it was so hard for his ego to accept that this is it. He actually wanted just to do this. He can do build a business later, you know, but he would never have his kids at the age they were, you know. Does that make sense? He when you get to your true choice, then you can take the correct action. You cannot take the correct action if you haven't got your choice right. You see, that was a complete choice of about how we need to go do all of these other things and you know, go in this indirect way. You see, when I understood this, I realized that, you know, what I really, really, really could do is, is, a, is, is a, I knew that I wanted to teach and share this work. This is, I knew it. And I had to, to realize I didn't want to run the business. I knew what I wanted to do. And it's, it's difficult, very difficult, very difficult to let go of the unconscious patterning, hey? But, oh boy, is it rewarding. Okay, and then the last one is default. Okay, default. This person uh, just just chooses to have have no uh, no choices. They basically say, you know, life life is life is Chris. I've already got it, everything I want. You know, they even mask it. They say, I'm going to just do some feminine action. They say to me, I'm just going to sit here. Everything's good. And they create all sorts of stories around this. No, I'm just I'm going to sit back. I'm going to do nothing. I'm just going to receive, and I, I won't have any. And uh, and this is very interesting: is that if you don't have creative structure and choice, if you don't, uh, then you're going to be in someone else's. Because you, you know, if you're not moving towards what it is you want to create, well, time's going to keep moving. And what will happen is that you will just end up in someone else's choice. You'll get in someone else's dysfunction. You have to move somewhere. You see, you have to have some sort of structure. So if you haven't created it, you're going to fall into whatever the government structure is, whatever family structure is. And you might find your life being all about just helping other people or caring for sick people or just doing all these other things. And that might be okay, but it's definitely not in true choice. True. It's just not, and it's just not in it, you know? There's no judgment. We don't make anything wrong here, um, but we are teaching uh, how to be in true choice. That's what I am teaching. So how is that as a bit of a review for some of you? Yeah, right on, Greg. How was that? Good stuff? Cool. Uh, so yes, the, um, that's uh, whatever chapter Lana said was it's in my book. 
Um, just by being a masterclass, you get a free ebook copy um, of my book. I do recommend that you, you know, you splash out the nine or nineteen dollars on Amazon and get the real thing. Then you can carry it around with you as well. Um, so, so that would be cool. That would be cool. So, true choice is very, very, very important, and we're, we're here to teach you creative development. That's what we're here to teach you. And so step number one is to realize that you really can have it all right now. And, and to, to truly arrive in a place of just amazing appreciation. And there's no reason why you can't do that. Really. You know, I was, I'm, I'm getting ready to teach uh, a five-day um, workshop starting tomorrow here in San Diego. So I'm, I'm flowing halfway around the world and I'm teaching innocence. So whenever I'm about to teach a course and teaching innocence, teaching how to connect to the field, you know, I'm, I'm going through it and I've got my notes and I'm going through it. And so as I was remembering the innocence meditation and re-listening to it again and getting myself really connected to it, I found myself just in complete innocence and in awe as I was, you know, flying on this uh, airplane with Wi-Fi, watching the latest movies, you know, with so much at my fingertips and just, just the magic that humans have created. You know, it, it, seriously, if... If you are living in a belief structure that you can't be, can't realize that you have it all right now, you're completely missing the fact that you live in 2023 with all of this incredible magic around that, um, that our ancestors just dreamed about. Right? Right? And, and and that's the first step is to truly realize that, uh, you know, that that until you are completely 100 percent like, man, how great is this? How awesome is life? Then you're probably not going to have true choices. You probably won't. You probably create choices to try to escape or get out. And it's the hardest to do that. It's the hardest to do that when stuff's against you. It's the hardest. That's the time you need to do it. That's the time you actually need to do it and go, you know what, I'm going to live it. So, so the first step is to live those core four choices. So we've already helped you. you. You make those choices and you remove any resistance to those four. Okay. And then you get on to creating true choices. Okay, and it's very, 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 very important uh, that you do, that you do it, that you really do it. So can can I ask everyone's commitment to just have a look at their uh, their choices and to to just make sure they're true? Now, if you would like some help with this, uh, Rochelle does offer a one-on-one -on -one session uh, to get your choices right. I believe Julie does as well. And, uh, you know, it's obviously you, you're going to have their one on one time. I think that it's two sessions. So if you would like some some time, I see Rochelle's on here. Maybe you'll pop your link in and you can actually get some one on one help. But honestly, everything I've said today and what's in the book and in the training is more than enough. OK. Yeah. It's more than enough for you to figure it out. So what is holding you back? if anything, from making true choices? What, what, if anything, do you think is, is holding you back from just having your, just being able to go for true choices? Like, what is it that you think that, you know, just be honest with yourself for a minute. What, what is it, you know, is it that you don't think you have enough money? So, you, you know, you need to get the money or you need to get healthy. What is it that you think you need to do before? What is it? Like, what is that thing that's just there that, you know, that inner child that that's there? What is that that you think you need to do before you can get on with true choices? Yeah, this is all good stuff, Chris, but, but I just need like 
I've just got this health thing or Chris, that sounds like really good stuff, but, but look, this was my old one. And I used to say to myself, I'm, I'm, I can't go do that until I've made at least $10 million. That's what I said. I said, until I've made that, I, I can't. And uh, it, it actually was the opposite. <laughs> Yeah. Fear of burnout, inner power. Yeah, what what do you think it is? And and you know, I'm not I'm not trying to project. I know a lot of people have done a lot of work on themselves, but um, you know, this is this is a basic session, isn't it? So, you know, you might just be here uh, you know, helping others. But but just really really ask yourself, what is what is stopping me just having true choices? Meaning what is stopping me just accepting that there's nothing better than now? <laughs> that's the only way, Fiona. Linda says, if your ankle is broken and your true, true choice is to complete a marathon, wait till the ankle heals. That, that would be the obvious action because... The, the truth is, is that it's not time for true choice if your house is burning down. It's a very important point. So I appreciate Linda for bringing it up. If your house is on fire, you know, don't worry about true choices. Get the house, you know, solve that thing. True. Like it's not, not the right time to be redecorating the inside of your house if it's on fire. So, so look, this, you know, sometimes you have to deal with stuff, right? But we're not, we're not talking about that here. We're not, are we? We're not, we're not talking about that. We're talking about how to set your life up right. Does that make sense, everybody? Because it's a very good point. It's a very good point, you know. Uh, we're not talking about that, though. We're, you know, I understand that that's part of what needs to happen. You know, let's say you, you've got some stuff going on. You need to go deal with it. It would be, um, it, it wouldn't make sense to me to remove your tension to go fix that or, or, or figure it out, right? You've got to go deal with that. But what we're talking about here is how to have a magnetic mind, right? How to, uh, how to um, live the creative orientation. That's what we're here to do, right? That's what we're here to do. We're here to set your life up. So you're setting your life up. But here's what, when you know you're being in dysfunction. Yeah, Chris, I, I can't make my true choices because my ankle is sore. What? Yeah, I can't make true choices, Chris. My kid is sick. No, your kid is sick. Go deal with that. But you're still allowed to have true choices. Do you see the difference? Do you see the difference between when you use it as your reason to not go for what you want? Chris, I can't make true choices. I've got a, uh, you know, a digestive problem. No, no, you need to deal with your digestive problem. I get it. But you get to have true choices. You see that? True. That's right, Rose. That's right. So see, our unconscious always wants to protect us. But just because your kid is sick, uh, or you know, you've got, uh, you know, a challenging thing going on with your mother. It doesn't mean you, you can't be in your choices. It's, it's very important. See, when you truly become a creator, when you're truly in the creative orientation, and you're going for it, it doesn't mean these other things won't be there. It doesn't, it means that you stay in the orientation while other human things are going on. Does that make sense, everybody? So, so we're talking about setting your life up and going for it. What you'll find though is that you're when you when you are living your true choices and you are just loving your life and you and you're just going for it and you're living your highest, your highest calling and you're going for it, these other things will pop up and you'll just go, yeah, I'll deal with that later. You know, yeah, my kid's sick, but you know, I can, you know, I, the kid, the the kid's sick's gonna be fine. I'm gonna go deal with it. How sick? Not too sick. Carry on, right? Like, go pick them up, put them at home, carry them, right? Like, that's it. The unconscious will say, "Oh no, I can't do any of it. You know, I can't write my book because uh, all of a sudden, you know, I've got I've got this other thing going on." This is the key when we 
we're, we're, to- you're like, we're talking about living creative orientation. We're talking about having a magnetic mind. We're not talking about trying to fix and be perfect. Uh, you know, that's not what we're talking about because that doesn't work. Those things are just going to be there. It's a, it's a really, it's a really important one. I had this uh, big insight with a, with a lady uh, who was at one of our live events and at this live event, it was it was a very high priced event, like a fifteen thousand dollar event. She was at, and she was having a great time. Um, but her daughter uh, had had let her know somehow that the and the daughter was an adult daughter uh, in her early twenties had let her know that she'd got back into the relationship with her her ex, and uh, apparently her ex was abusive, physically abusive. And so this mother was very upset about it, right? And rightly so. Uh, however, she was taking her outside uh, of the room and she was, she was visibly upset and, and really, you know, really, 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 really struggling. So I went out with her and, and I said, oh, what's going on? And she, she let me know. And I said, hey, I care about you so much, but you're having a good time here at this session, aren't you? So oh, I'm loving it. It's the best thing ever but I don't think I can continue because this big thing has happened. I said, okay, so what's the truth here? Like, what's the truth? And she said, well, well, you know, the truth is, is blah, blah, blah. I'm so upset. And I was like, but is the truth that you can really do much about this? Like, what's the real truth? I know you're upset. And, and she goes, well, well, no, there's not, you know, blah, blah, blah. So, so what she did from memory, and, uh, you know, I'm just going to get the lesson. I might miss some of the facts. She sends a text message or rings or something and says, hey, you know, uh, talk to her husband or whatever happened and said, hey, you know, we trust you. We love you. Um, and your husband's down the, uh, my hu- your dad's down the road. If anything goes wrong, just ring him. You know, we care about you. And I believe that the text she got back was, thanks, thanks, for, thanks, mom. Uh, it, it's all going to be good. Love you back. And that was a text back. And that was the truth. And then she got back into the event, had a great time. Big breakthrough for this lady. And, and upon talking uh, to her and others more, we found out that whenever whenever this, this person was going for what she wanted, there was always a family matter that got in the way. Is that a good example, everyone? You see that the family matter was that was a real thing. That's an upsetting thing, and and you know. But but there's also the truth is that 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 it, it didn't need to take her away. And so she come back in, and um, and you know I don't know the rest of the story. I don't know whether the relationships worked out good or not. It's not none of my business. But I know that she got what she wanted um, out of the out of the sessions probably a lot more. And, and so that's what I mean about living the creative orientation. That's that's what we're here to talk about is to is to create your life. To create your life. And, and so back to the question which is you know what stops you from living the creative orientation? What is it? Is it I don't have enough money? Is it a health problem? What is it? What is the thing that that you think is always there? For me, it was this nagging feeling that because I'd given up on my basketball career, that I hadn't done enough in the world and that I wasn't good enough and that I needed to do something good enough. And, and that's all. And, and I was hypnotized into that way of being. And I and there was nothing that mattered. I had to do that. So what is it for you? Yeah. Yeah, nice Carenza. Yeah. And so how long have you been giving that the power? You know, how long have you been giving that the power? And there might be some truth in it too. You know, the the unconscious is very good at, 
at finding some truth and finding examples. And also, how is that not true as well? Have you seen other people do it without it? You know, is there people that if you are really certain your business would work, isn't there people that would invest in it? Right. So also, how is it completely untrue too? So look, you know, acknowledge that there's truth in it, but then also, you know, acknowledge that there's also a deceit in there as well. Hey. Just just can everyone just give me a yes if you can notice that. That yeah, look, there, yeah, I can find reasons for it to be true, but I can also notice how, you know, it's not true too. See, we put so much power in it. Hey, we put so much power in it. And so all beliefs are just opinions and, and we can always find a way to back up any belief. Yeah. See, the, the truth is, is that, you know, you do have to look after your family if things aren't going great for them. There's truth in that, you know. There, there is a truth that, you know, having having money helps a business grow. There is a truth in that, you know, there is a, there is a truth in, in that, you know, uh, having a different body shape makes you feel good, you know, and, and that maybe it's been a struggle that all of these, that these things are true, but also, you know, uh, if you burn more calories that, than you put into your body and, and you do it consistently, unless you have a hormone problem, you know, for 99% of people that will shift their body shape, right? It's also true that if your business is going to work, someone else will invest in it. You know, people like to make money without him to do anything. And it's just, you know, that's also true as well. It's also true that you might not be good at something to begin with and you're a beginner. So you have to kind of be crappy at it for a while until you get good, right? These, so these are true as well. It's also true, you know, that, look, your family does need you, but also isn't the thing you're creating going to show them, you know, that that that's just as important to create too. So do you see that? So I'm just bringing you to more awareness here because, True choices are really important, but we find ways to not be in them. We find ways to not be in them. And it's just not how you want to continue after this. It's just not how you want to continue. So who's up for it? Who's up for right now is to accept the 100% that right now life is the, it's the best it's ever going to be you're allowed to feel worthy and good enough and significant and capable you're allowed to and and you must and then you're allowed to go for things that you just choose to yeah and just go that's it that's it and live the creative reality without trying to fix yourself yeah so we're going to do recode on being um, the predominant creative force in our life. See, the predominant creative force is one of our true choices. And the predominant creative force is a feeling where you are creating your life how you choose it to be. Okay. And so we've all just made a decision that you're choosing to have life go, you know what, life is great. And I'm going to go create some awesome stuff and, um, and to be in your own power. So we'll go through the steps around one of these, this core choice of being the predominant creative force in our life. So, so when you're ready, uh, please just uh, go ahead and make the choice. We do this by closing our eyes in your mind. Say it in your mind as I say it out loud. I choose the end result of being the predominant creative force in my life. And just notice how it feels to say that. I choose to have my life the way I choose it to be. I choose it. I'm choosing it to be like this. And notice how it feels to be the one responsible for how you're feeling, what you're experiencing, what you're tolerating, and what you're going for. And just allow yourself to really feel it. I, I am predominant creative force map. I choose my life to be the way I choose it to be. Just... and just choose that and now you can open your eyes and look back to the now in the current reality 
So where do you give the power away in your current reality? Yeah. Do you give it away to others' opinions? Yep, maybe. Where do you give the power away? Do you give the power away to being perfect? Yep. Yeah. Where do I give the power away? Hmm. I give the power away to. Hmm. Yeah. And just notice. So, so now you get to create. Yeah. Hmm. You get to be completely happy with how it is now. And you get to go create it how you want it to be. So you want that body shape. You want that level of energy. You want that relationship. You want that, that business. You want that career. You want that to do that. But you're not anxious about it. You're just, you're just doing it. And stuff pops up, but you just do it. 